You're tuned in to the Dakota Housing Network on Super Talk 1270 and supertalk1270.com. In-depth discussion and analysis of real estate issues nationwide and those issues unique to our area. Our team of experts includes Joe Sheehan, Greg Larson, Dave Floor, Brian Ritter, and a great variety of guests. The Dakota Housing Network begins now on Super Talk 1270 and supertalk1270.com. Oh, and good morning, everyone. This is Brian Ritter, your host this morning. I'm joined today, as always, by the man riding our ship, our helm, producer Jim. Arr. There he is. There I, he is. It's talk like a pirate day for me. Wait a minute. Arr. Put an eye patch on then, Jim. If oh, we're going okay. to stay in character, let's make this happen. I'm also joined by my guest this morning, the CEO, the new CEO of the Bismarck Mandan Convention and Visitors Bureau, Refer to here as from here on out as a CVB. We're not going to say the whole name, Sherry. All right. It's going to be the CVB. That's it. Okay. I'm joined by CVB CEO, Sherry Grossman. Welcome, Sherry. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for inviting me. Well, thanks so much for being here. And as always, uh, today here in the Dakota Housing Network, if you hear anything over the next the course, the next hour, you want to call in and talk about anything that Sherry and I are going to be discussing, whatever Jim throws at us as well, the number here in the studio is 663-1270. It's a beautiful day out. It's it is spring, gorgeous. Sherry, right? It is spring. It's it is, gorgeous. It's, we should we should be outside today, Brian. We, we could we could have done a remote broadcast. I don't think Raging Rivers is open yet. Um, we could have done something, right? We, maybe we should still go out, can we? Well, boy, Jimmy, want to take the show on the road? I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking I'd uh, turn on the microphone first of all. <laughs> 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 I was thinking we should all uh, have a show from the uh, shores of Lake Sakakawea one day. Scenic. Lake Sakakawea. Lake Sakakawea. We can do that. You know, from certain trip. angles, you cannot see the other end <laughs> of the lake. It's like you're on the ocean. I can see Russia from there, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, this morning's show, as always, again, we're, we're joined by Jim. We've got myself here. I'm the president and CEO of the Bismarck Mandan Development Association. I'm very excited to have Sherry with us today because, like like me, Sherry is, is new in her post, but not, not new to the organization, not new to the community. Uh, you'll hear some things that we're working on together. But we start every show here, Sherry, with a little bit of around town by the numbers because I don't know how, how many times a day do you get asked, you know, what's new, what's happening, what hotel is being built here, Sherry? Every day, it every seems like. Day. Well, frequently anyway. That's exactly <laughs> it because there is so much happening. And we could, spend, we could spend the rest of the morning and probably a good part of the afternoon talking about everything that's happening in Bismarck and Mandan, and we probably still wouldn't catch everything. So one of the ways, one of the things that we at the BMDA do is we publish a document each month. We call it the BMDA Economy at a Glance. And it's a collection of economic indicators, things like workforce, sales tax collections, uh, real estate, new construction, and possibly you know, where Sherry's most interested is the uh, airport passenger boardings. Obviously, it's got a direct impact on what she does. We'll get to that later. But let's talk about the workforce. My investors, your members, Sherry, I mean, issue number one, I'm sure, in all their minds is workforce. I mean, especially for a service-based economy, you've got a lot of people worrying about, you know, where am I going to get the workers from? We're going to get them. I mean, I hear, hear that every day. You know, I, I do hear that too, Brian. But I do have to say lately, it seems to be better. You know, we're not hearing it as much as we used to. Um, I think we're, it's stabilizing a little bit from what we're the feedback we're getting from our industry. And, and Sherry, that's a, Sherry's assertion is backed up by some numbers we have here. If you went back and you looked in Burley and Morton County, Back in December of 2013, the size of that labor force in these two counties was about 70,100 people, a little over 70,000. You fast forward now to December of 2014, that number is 72,400. So the size of that labor force has gotten bigger. Now, job openings, of course, have have stayed relatively high. Uh, February of 2015, we had about 3,400 job openings in Burley and Morton County. One month later in March, that number had jumped over 600 to over 4,000 job openings. So we're going to need every single one of those bodies. But I would echo Sherry's comments. Certainly workforce has been a cause for concern, a topic of discussion, call it what you will, in the business community for the last five, seven years, something like that, especially as we've kind of ramped up here. But I would echo those comments. We are seeing in a lot of sectors, I'm not saying all, but in, in a lot of sectors, you are seeing the stabilization. You're seeing a deeper labor pool. Um Again, not true for everybody. I'm sure there are people listening who go, well, that's not the case with me. I'm not disputing that. But I think in a lot of places, you're seeing a deeper pool. Now, of course, all those people, that adds up to more population, adds to more money in the economy. So, again, in Bismarck and Mandan, uh, you're going to hear sales tax be an issue here in the next couple of weeks, especially in the city of Mandan. But each city levies a 1% sales tax. There's, there's more on top of that for the state. 
and the counties, but each city levies a 1% sales tax that is used to fund economic development, uh, infrastructure projects, buy down your your, uh, your property taxes. In February of 14, the city of Bismarck generated a little over a million dollars, $1.023 million. city of Mandan generated about $174,000. Fast forward a year now, in Bismarck, that number is up to $1.26 million. And in Mandan, that number jumped to about 183,000. So you're seeing you're seeing a good amount. You're seeing more money being spent in the economy, and we always like that. And we'll talk more about that with Sherry here in a little bit. Look at real estate, boy. If, if you're not hearing about workforce, you're hearing about houses, right? People, no kidding. people are asking that people whether it's apartments or single family homes. People are asking about houses. I mean, you I mean, you hear just as much as I do. We are selling more homes. Well, I mean, about the same amount of homes. Uh, February 14, there were. 68 single family units sold between Bismarck and Mandan. February 15, that number was 69. So, about a, about a stable number. Now, I think that where the rub becomes is the price. I mean, I think as anyone who's lived in this market for any amount of time can, can attest to, you know, prices are more expensive. Homes are more expensive. Rents are more expensive. And so, look at, let's look at the average sale price. Sherry, give me a guess. What do you think the average existing home sold for in February of 2015? Give me a rough guess. Um, 275000 Ooh. You know what? Year to date, we're about two sixty. Oh, I was pretty you close. Were, you were pretty close, Sherry. You didn't even cheat. I didn't even see you look over here. No, I can't oh. see that far away. <laughs> <laughs> Just have your cheaters on. No, the average sale, the average home in February 2015 sold for two thirty seven. Two thirty seven. Now, that surprises me. But again, as, as our friends from the Board of Realtors are always so quick to point out, don't base it on one month because guess what? You could have one house that was, you know, a million dollars. It'll skew your number. So don't put too much stock. We go back to Sherry's number, that, that year-to-date number. And again, about 260. If you went back now, what's most concerning though is you go back now year-to-date, February 2014, that number is only 237. You know, so you've seen an increase obviously over the course of the year. Um, we'll see, of course, as construction season ramps up here. I mean, you'll see that permit activity. You'll see those prices probably stabilize. At least I'm hoping they are. And again, in terms of new construction, single-family permits, uh, again, February 2015, 10 new homes. It shouldn't surprise anybody. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's North Dakota, folks. You can't dig when there's snow on the ground. You can't dig when the frost is nine feet deep. Uh, you can in some places, and you saw apparently 10 did, uh, but you know, you've got 10 permits out there uh, that I think you're going to see um, – Everything I'm hearing, Sherry, maybe you can echo those comments. Everything I'm hearing is that this year's going to be a very busy year for housing. Not only existing homes, but for new home construction. Would you agree? Yeah, from what I've been hearing, I think that's probably true. And I think a lot of what's driving that is everything we talked about earlier. You've got more people in the market working. You've got more money being spent in the economy. And, of course, that's going to translate into existing home sales. It's going to translate into new home sales. And I don't care whether you're Northwest Bismarck, Southeast Mandan, uh, wherever you are. Uh, if there's land to build on developers in this community are going to find a way to build on it. Now, I hear we're being played off here by Jim's got some, I think it's Martha and the Vandellas. Motown. A little Motown for everyone this morning. Again, this is the Dakota Housing Network. My name is Brian Ritter. I'm joined by Sherry Grossman. Give us a call at 663 1270. We'll be back after the break. Currently, it's 46. You're never more than a few minutes from a weather update here on Super Talk 1270. And we're back here in the, the Dakota Housing Network. I'm your host, Brian Ritter, the president and CEO of the Bismarck Mandan Development Association, joined this morning by the Temptations, apparently. Jim, we've got a Motown theme. Yeah. That's all right. You can't see me dancing up for those of you in your car, but I can and assure that's you. that's okay. Hey, Sherry, let's watch <laughs> it. Okay, we can't, we can't all be that great at dancers. <laughs> I'm joined this morning by my host, Sherry Grossman, the new CEO of the Bismarck Mandan CVB, the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And before the break, we were talking about some economic indicators, and we got right down to the bottom of the BMDA economy at a glance. And that last indicator is passenger boardings at the Bismarck Airport. Now, we're you know we've, we're just talking over the break about all the new carriers that we have, and and Sherry was going to touch on some of that here in a little bit. But year over year, February to February. We saw boardings go up, go up by about a thousand passengers. We did we did uh, nineteen thousand one hundred and fifteen passenger boardings in February of fourteen. February of fifteen, that number had grown up to over about twenty thousand three hundred, something like that. And so you've seen a good size growth. What would you chalk that up to, Sherry? I mean, what would you chalk? I mean, what would you do? You think it's the new carriers that we have in, in at the Bismarck Airport that you're seeing more passengers? 
Well, you know what? That would make sense because we have more incoming and outgoing flights. So that's obviously going to bring our numbers up. Well, so right now, if if we're if I'm a business traveler to Bismarck and Mandan, I've got I've got a number, I've got a handful of options. We can fly Delta to Minneapolis, Saint Paul, uh, what, probably seven eight times a day. Seven here. flights a day. Seven yep. flights a day. We've got United flying what four or five times a day to Denver. Yep, I think so. Okay, uh, now we've got Frontier flying again uh, about three days a week. I think something like yep, that. Yeah, they just started up this month. I That's believe. exactly it, and we welcome them back. It's always nice to have more carriers, but they're now they're flying to Denver. American Airlines just started now. They've got one daily service to Chicago O'Hare. And then to Dallas Fort Worth. That's right. And then Allegiant, we've got what three destinations in Allegiant now? We've got Orlando, Las Vegas, and then Phoenix Mesa. Right, three. So we've got so we've got a lot of carriers. Um, do you think, Sherry? Do you think, in your opinion, that we're bringing travelers from now outside of Bismarck Mandan? more travelers from outside of Bismarck Mandan into our airport because we have more carriers? You know, I I think we are. That's always a concern when we work with groups outside of the state is how they're going to get in here. And, you know, we're very used to using Delta and United here because we've had them for years. But others are interested in using the other airlines. You know, they're, They're going to connect. They have their own frequent flyer miles from their places. So the more carriers, the better. But another thing that's important, even with just Delta and United, is the frequency of the flights so that we can get more connections, you know, more people in and out when we're bringing the larger conventions in. Now, Sherry is the new CEO of the CVB. Again, new to the position, but not new to the organization. Congratulations, Sherry. Hey, thank you. Now, for those of us who are not maybe familiar with the CVB and what it is you do, why don't you give us the dime tour? Tell us about the CVB and what you guys work on. I will do that. Um, you know, basically, we are a sales and marketing organization. And what we do is we market to outside of the city and outside of the state. You know, frequently, we are probably the the image that most people are seeing outside of the state. Um, we're the organization that does that. And basically, what we do is that we entice visitors from around the world to eat, meet, sleep, and play in Bismarck Mandan. Hmm. You know, our objective is to showcase our community to visitors, influence them to make Bismarck Mandan their destination, thus stimulating our economic growth in the community by increasing visitor volume and visitor expenditures. What's important about Sherry's organization and her mission, I mean, there's a number of things important, but one of the, people always ask me, uh, as the economic development organization, how do we work together and what's the importance of, of tourism and, and what the CVB is doing? I'll go back to some of those indicators we talked about earlier. I mean, especially sales tax collections, taxable sales and purchases. It's important that listeners realize all those dollars are not being generated just by those of us who live here in Bismarck and Mandan. It's, it's a good chunk, no doubt, but it's not all of us, is it, Sherry? No, it's not. And you know what? Probably people don't realize is tourism is the third largest industry in the state, and it brings a lot of money into Bismarck Mandan, too. Just to give you a little bit of numbers on that, mm-hmm. in 2014, we hosted nearly 400 meetings, conventions, and events. Those 400 meetings brought in 190,000 people to our community. And while they were here, they spent $27.6 million dollars. See, and, and that that impact can't be understated because, and again, tourism is often thought of, I think a lot of us think it's like National, Lamp- National Lamp- Lampoon's excuse me, <laughs> vacation. You know, it's like you're going to Wally World. I mean, it, it's everyone thinks of tourism as that as that type of vacation, but not that's not necessarily so because we have a lot of attractions. It could be tournaments, could be sporting events. And, I mean, I'm on the right track, right, Sherry? Yeah, you are. And you are. I think what's really nice about what people don't realize is that $27.6 million of that, $11.1 million were expenditures that came from regional, national, and international groups. So that's a lot of out-of-state money being injected into our local economy. Now, Sherry, you are a membership organization, much like, much, much like the BMDA. Your members, I mean, who are they? I mean, what kind of businesses are they? <clears throat> well, obviously, hotels are our members, our restaurants, um, shops, um, all kinds of things like that. And, you know, we have a lot of members that aren't what you would typically think of as having a direct impact. You know, and the nice thing about those members, I think they see the big picture. They realize how the dollar trickles around in the community. I mean, we might have um, um, car dealerships or, you know, hmm. places like that that you wouldn't normally. And it's great to have those people be members as well because, you know, that this is what we do. We bring the money in, and as it goes through the economy, it helps the local residents as well. 
Now, I think most people probably don't recognize or maybe don't. Uh, your building is the building right there across from McDonald's. Uh, boy, we are, those of us who, Road. Those of us who, used to, who are used to living here and have grown up here, but it wasn't that long ago that neighborhood looked a lot different, Sherry. And you guys were you guys were one of the first buildings up there, weren't we you? We were. We were the we were just the first ones to go right off the interstate up there, all by ourselves there. Not, not anymore. No, not anymore. Uh, Sherry, how big? I mean, how many, how many folks do you work with? I mean, <clears throat> we have about ten people on our staff. Okay. Um, we hire some extras in the summer. Um, what people may not realize, since you mentioned our building there, yes, we also have um, a visitor staff that is there year round. In the summer, we have extended hours, and you know. At the CVB, our primary focus is bringing in meetings, conventions, and events. But we do work um, with tourists and visitors as well. Um, we're a great resource even from people locally. If you have some family in town, um, we have an awesome gift shop there full of Pride of Dakota products. And a resource we also have is we have information from all over the state. So if you want to actually plan it, not that we want you to leave here, <laughs> but if you do plan a trip out of here, we, we can help you with that Um too. What's the most common question? If people come in and see your visitor staff and they're, and they're, they're new to the community, they're coming in to see you, what's the most common question? Wow, the most common question is, you know, I think, although well, people are here to see your attractions, I think they want to know where to shop and where to eat. You know, they're already here, mm -hmm. so they want to plan their time here. And in the visitor center, our job is to make them stay an extra night. Yeah. So, and we also work at Hub and Spoke, you know, well, maybe tell them to go to the Washburn and the Interpretive Center and come back. But our job is to make their stay great while they're here so they have a good experience. They tell friends and family to come back and to get them to stay a little bit longer and spend a little bit more of that money. How do most people find you, Sherry? I mean, it's one thing for those of us in the community. We know where your building is. We know what the CVB is. But if I'm a visitor coming to the community, how do, we find, how do they most often find you? you think <clears throat> well you know these days i think they use their phone and google us yeah, brian well, yeah but that's pr yeah. probably the easiest and, you know, way and we do do advertising um for the for the tourists we you know we team with north dakota tourism mm -hmm. on that but most of our advertising that we do do is spent for meetings conventions and events are you some you said you've got some summer help obviously because summer mm -hmm. seems to be i mean at least around here probably the most busy season i mean would you say that's your busy season you know it's it's the busy season for our visitor center, but you know, surprisingly, the rest of our staff is busy all year long. Mm -hmm. um, we're booking and working far out into the future. I mean, we're booking conventions out to 2020. Oh, how badly do you have to fight the perception that Bismarck Mandan is a cold, barren wasteland where it's winter 24-7? You know, that has gotten better. Thank God. You know, when I started 18 years ago, it's like, oh, you have an airport? <laughs> And we do. We have an awesome, gorgeous, gorgeous airport. Yeah, but, you know, that has gotten better. And, you know, that's because North Dakota is the talk of the nation. Of I mean, many years ago when we would go to shows, we'd be uh, meeting planner shows or people mm -hmm. plan meetings. We'd be pulling in from the aisle. And now they're coming by to talk to us. They want to know about our great state. And they're interested in having their sporting events and meetings and conventions here. Do you... Your staff, you yourself included, do you fight a perception that Bismarck Mandan is oil country? I mean, do you have, if people are coming, to your point, if people are coming to the market for the first time, they don't know much about Bismarck and Mandan or the state for that matter, but they know what they read in the newspaper or they saw on TV, well, you said, I mean, a lot of these days, I mean, a lot of times these days, people see oil and gas. They see mm -hmm. oil rigs. I mean, do you ever do you ever have that happen? Do people just lump us in automatically with the Bakken? You know, they do. Obviously, people don't know our state, you know, very mm -hmm. well. They actually come in our visitor center and think that the four faces. They're asking how they get to those. Oh, Sherry, don't so, tell me that. Yeah, no, no, it happens. It's getting better, <laughs> but it does happen. So clearly, they don't know that we're not in the Bakken, where we're the, where the, we are. You know, that is getting better, but... Um, so, yeah, they do think that. Okay. But, you know, we kind of explain we're really not in that. We're more the corporate area for mm -hmm. that, and we're more of a corporate type of place okay. than that. Well, with that, we are going to – I want to remind all the callers. Uh, again, I've got Sherry Grossman with here with me here this morning, the CEO of the Bismarck Mandan CVB. Callers, if you're interested, you hear anything you want to talk about, any questions, number here in the studio is 663-1270. And we are going to go out here. Jim's got something. I don't even – is this Smokey? Smoking the Miracles. Smoking the Miracles. We're going to go out on here. Super Talk 1270. We'll be back right after the break. Currently, it's 46. Get the traffic and weather information you need anytime on Super Talk 1270 and online at supertalk1270.com. Oh, 
And we're back here in the Dakota Housing Network with Marvin Gaye. I think Tammy Terrell as well. Oh, boy. Jim has got us a winner today with the Motown theme. It's a winner, folks. Here this morning and with me is my guest, Sherry Grossman, the CEO of the Bismarck Mandan Convention and Visitors Bureau, the CVB. When we get into the break, we were talking about some of the events, some of the things that are happening in Bismarck and Mandan. Uh, what's bringing that new money, that new blood, that new energy into the community? I think what Sherry and I were talking about over the break was that I think people, again, when they think tourism, they think visitors, they have Disney World, Wally World. They have that type of family destination vacation in their mind and not necessarily the other things that CVB is involved in, the events, the the regional meetings, things like that, which we have an awful lot of. I think more than probably most people expect. Would you agree with that, Sherry? Exactly. I think people have no idea how many meetings and the impact they have. And that's one of the great things having Sherry in the studio today with, I mean, today with us is that she can tell us about those things. And so I've asked Sherry, she's got a great list of stuff here coming up to talk about all the events. You, I mean, some of the events you can expect here over the spring and summer. So Sherry, you want to go through your list? Sure. And I'm glad you said some because there's no way we could get through all. So, you know, I picked a few out to highlight for you, but you know, one event that we are really excited about and, you know, we hope the community will come out and watch some of a little bit is um, we were awarded um, the American Legion Central Plains Regional Basketball Tournament. Or, I'm sorry, baseball tournament. And we're actually we have it this year and next year. Ooh. You know, It's very exciting. Um, we have eight teams will be here, two from North Dakota, two from Nebraska, two from Minnesota, one from Iowa, and one from South Dakota. This year, it will be Thursday through Monday, August 6th through the 10th, and the opening ceremony will be um, Thursday night. It's an event that locals can come and watch. I think they're going to do some different things um, throughout it. They're all in the planning stages yet, but a chance for locals to come and watch this baseball tournament, and, you know, we'd like to see the stands filled and, you know, tell them it's a great, so they understand we're a great community to visit and well, sure. To enjoy. And Sherry, I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought up that event and you went off with that one because let's connect the dots. We probably don't get that event if it's not for the participation of Bismarck Parks and Rec and the Bismarck Baseball Boosters who went out and raised money to renovate that stadium. Exactly. I mean, as, a, as a kid who grew up and played baseball at that field, um, it wasn't the world's greatest place to play. And now you see what it is. And if you haven't driven down South Washington Street past the New Diamond, uh, drive by. It's fantastic. But again, I would think it's safe to say if we don't get that expansion, Sherry, we don't get this event. Exactly. You know, and, and partnerships are at the CVB what we're all about. We're very active in the regional and national market, visiting with groups about coming here and working and bidding it. But, we, you know, we need locals to manage the events and to actually put them on. So we're all about partnerships and collaboration. And we've done that um, frequently with Bismarck Parks and Recreation and Mandan Parks and Recreation on a variety of events. Um, so since we're talking about baseball, Absolutely. we'll move on to softball. Yes. Um, the McQuaid softball tournament, oh. of course, everyone loves McQuaid. Um, June 26th to the 28th. Now, this year is the 40th anniversary for this group, the world's largest charity softball tournament. And I would like to change a little misconception out there. Everyone says, oh, no, McQuaid's is in town. <laughs> There's no hotel rooms we, we can't Hide your kids. do anything else here. That is not true. <laughs> Any, me, many years ago, we have a thousand more hotel rooms than we did about 10 years ago. So there is still room to have other events here. There is still, you can still have your family reunions, weddings, and we, we're still welcoming others to the community other than for softball. But, you know, to tell you how that tournament has grown, you know, it's their 40th anniversary. Um, they started in 1976 with 103 teams. Now they have over 450 teams that require 90 umps, 40 diamonds, and 70 soft, seven softball complexes. So Ooh. that has really grown. And uh, we talked about the impact. You know, we estimate that the players, coaches, and fans spend about $1.000 well, while they're here every year in our communities. Friday night, Clem Kelly Diamonds, McQuaid Softball Tournament. It's, it has to be on your list. If you're from Bismarck or Mandan, you're, or you're going to do one thing over the course of the summer, Friday night at McQuaid's is easily one of my favorite things to do. Easily. Now, our team ends up, usually ends up getting, playing Friday night down in a different complex. There's so many teams now. But you go down to McQuaid's, there are people there who will start showing up at noon the night before to get a spot get down at Clem Kelly. Get a good seat. you got to get a good seat right on yeah. number five. But it's such a tremendous event. And again, Sherry just mentioned the impact. All those players, all those umps, all that money, it's a great thing for Bismarck and Mandan. Yeah, it is. And, of course, we have the state track tournament 
t- right. track back this year. Um, it's um, Friday and Saturday, May 22nd through the 23rd at the Bowl. That's always exciting um, to have that here. We love our high school activities gr- groups. Well, let's talk about another partnership. I'm going to talk about the MDU Resources Bowl. Uh, again, opened up in 1997. Remember, uh, remember that date for some reason. Opened in 97, and, you know, it had, it had aged. Mm-hmm. Um, we, it, it was It's a great facility. It still was a great facility. But thanks to a great partnership and a great community effort, really, between folks like the Protect Our Turf uh, Committee, the Bismarck Manhattan Chamber of Commerce, the CVB, and others, raised, what, close to $10 million to renovate that I facility? Think so, yep. would, would you, would, I mean, much like the baseball tournament, would you suspect that we probably don't get the track back like that unless we have the renovations there? You know, right now we probably have the nicest, we do have the nice track facility Absolutely. in the state. And, and it is important to where many of these things are very competitive. They don't automatically come here. And we do need the facilities to have these events. And right now we do have a, one of the nicest tracks in the well, state. And you, th- and you think about how often that facility is used. It's an outdoor field, of course, but it's going to be used. I mean, they were playing softball on the turf, I mean, probably late March already. Yeah, it's, so it's as soon busy. As, that, as soon as that snow goes, it's being used from March, I mean, probably all the way till the snow flies again, so a solid eight, nine months. Mm-hmm. And it's not just for a state tournament. It's for uh, smaller meets. You've got the University of Mary, our public schools, our private schools are playing there. Uh, again, partnerships like that are important for our community, and especially to what you do. Exactly. Um, and a couple of other things that yeah. um, you might not think of is the Aqua Storm Swim Club oh. is hosting some swim meets here, which is always fun to see. They have their state long course meet um, Friday and Saturday, July 24th through the 25th. You know, another great facility, the BSC Aquatic Center. Course. So we're excited to have them there. And then the Nishu Bowmen are hosting several events throughout the year and are held at their beautiful complex at Riverwood. And I don't have the dates on that. They have several, but their website is nishubowmen.com. And I invite you to check it out if you want to see something different. It's kind of a, an event that most wouldn't think of. Um, we have a chess tournament. You know, We have baseball, um, more softball, all kinds of things. But a little bit different event for those of you that want to bring kids to the event okay. is of course the slide the city which is going to be in mandan i had just written that down sherry august 29th great minds um of course great um, minds exactly um the mandan park district is hosting the slide the city in mandan on august 29th i, I think it's going to take place on sunset drive adjacent to mandan high school it's from 10 to 8. And if you haven't heard about it, you really need to check out the website. It's slidethecity.com. It's a family-friendly event. It's a thousand-foot slide, fo- slip and slide water party event. <laughs> and, you know, they're partnering with the Mandan Progress Organization and to help bring in food, craft vendors, and farmer's market music, inflatables. It's designed to be a fun family event. And we do hope this brings in visitors from outside as well. Well, so. Facebook is an indication. I mean, people are, people are going to come to this thing. Now, do I understand, quickly, Sherry, that we're going to start at the top of the hill? I mean, top of the sort of the top of Sunset Drive, up by the high school, and you're going to slide down the hill, down Sunset, all the way down, almost to Main Street. That is my understanding of it. And you know, to make it safe, as I understand it, there's there's separate lanes. There's one for. Those that maybe want to go faster, <laughs> the groups. There's one for kids. They have several different lanes to make it, you know, work, workable for everyone. And it, I think the ticket prices vary depending on how many times you want to go down the slide. And they're available already, so you can start getting your tickets, and there'll be on-site reserva- res- reservations as well. Sherry, do you think that our location, when it comes to a lot of these events, whether it is the, the Central Plains Regional Baseball Tournament, whether it is a state track meet, do you think our physical location, being in the center of the state, helps us in some respects? It does. You know, for whether it be our statewide event or these, it does. And I, I think that in the combination of, you know, people like coming to Bismarck Mandan. You know, we're, we're central in the state, but we're a place that has so many things to offer. We have um, the, the shopping, the dining. You know, we, we have a nice mix of the big box for those that maybe live in small communities mm-hmm. that don't have that and the the local chains or the I'm sorry the national chains that they're familiar with but we also have that unique flair as well so many um new shops in the downtown area and new restaurants and new hotels which people like new too well it's interesting about sherry's point is that she's absolutely right we do have a great mix and we've got a great mix in our economy but also in our offerings for visitors and again uh, retail, like it or love it, can't leave it. 
because it is important. It's important whether you're trying to keep people in your community. It's, trying to, it's important when you're trying to bring people in. I can't tell you how many times I've been asked, when is Home Depot coming? Because people care about people care about retail. And it's, it's not just people in this community. People, I mean, it's people from all over. They want to know what offerings do we have. But to Sherry's point, we have a great local small business community. Downtown Mandan, you go down Main Street, you go to a place like Brea. I mean, Eve Kostelik and her staff there have done a great job creating a great niche store. You come downtown Bismarck, and you've got everything happening along Main Street. You've got uh, where I'm having lunch today at the Pond. Uh, boy, if you would have asked me you know, what was going to happen on the old drumstick, the old drummer, I wouldn't have guessed the, a place like the Pond. What a change. And it is fantastic. I know what I'm having already. Probably two caramel rolls when I'm done. But um, That's not lunch, Brian. I'm sorry. We must have got confused, Sherry. You, you don't see the look on my face? Come <laughs> on. No, it, it, we, we do have a great mix. It's part of a great community. Uh, I would encourage anyone who's listening right now, we're going to have 50 more minutes here with Sherry from the CVB. If you have questions, you want to talk about what we're talking about here today, uh, call in the studio at 663-1270. Uh, we're going to be here for another 15 minutes. We'll wrap it up here in the next break. Uh, but to play us out, we've got a little bit of Stevie Wonder to keep going along with Jim's Motown theme. Super Talk 1270. It's 52. Your news leader, weeknights at 6 and 10. Super Talk 1270. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, there it is. Little Supremes. No course, dancing, Brian. Of remember? course, Diane is in the middle. No, actually, I'm in the middle right now because Sherry's my left, Jim's my right. <laughs> that makes them Supremes. Come on, Jim. I know you want to say you want to throw something on top of there. No, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> We're back here on Super Talk 1270, the Dakota Housing Network. I'm your host, Brian Ritter. Joined today by my guest, Sherry Grossman, the CVB of the Bismarck Mandan Convention and Visitors Bureau. We just got off and we were talking about hotels. I mean, Sherry mentioned in the last 10 years, we've added what, probably? Roughly 1,000 rooms. I would, have never, I would have guessed a lot, but I don't know if I would have gone as high as 1,000 rooms, Sherry. Now, what do you, in your mind, in the last 10 years, what has driven that? I mean, do you think it's been spillover from the Bakken? Has it been just Bismarck Mandan growing? Do you think it's been a combination of things? You know, I do think it's a combination. Yes, you know, early on, I think it was a spillover from the Bakken mm-hmm. and Minot and, and Dickinson didn't have enough rooms. But I, I think that's just a part of it. I really think a lot of it just has to do with our growing economy and and the way Bismarck and Mandan is growing. Do you think we've got any gaps in terms of our hotel offerings? I mean, we, we've, got a lot, we've got a lot of great providers. I mean, we've got from everything from limited service to full service. But are there things that right now that maybe we're, we're lacking or that we're not being able to, I mean, you, you compete on a national basis for a lot of these things. We do. Uh, and, you know, most, the majority of all our new hotels have been limited service mm-hmm. or extended stay type properties. With the only exception is the Holiday Inn up north is opening um, this Friday, oh. I believe. And they are a full service property and they have some meeting space, but very limited. Okay. You know, it's, it's just three small rooms. So we... Other than that, our last full-service property was built in the early 80s, which is now the Radisson, which was the Sheraton back then. And you know, that is something, you know, it, we have not had an investment in a, in a full-service property that has some meeting space. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of great meeting space here, but because we are so successful with having state business here, we do have times when we're looking to bring in regional and national groups that – we're, 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 some of the times we're full with our, our regular business. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot, Sherry, and you're much better equipped to answer this than I, with what's happened with what's happened in terms of we've built so many rooms, uh, I think there was a lot of concern that we built so many so fast that we wouldn't be able to support them or fill them. I mean, you, you know, the, you know this, these numbers better than I. I mean, are we keeping up? Are we keeping those rooms full? Are we keeping a good... You know, our occupancy rate rate is holding strong. You know, it's down slightly, Mm -hmm. you know, which it's going to. But and I think, you know, as as we refocus, it's probably going to change a little bit. What type of groups we look for? You know, it's the the hotels that are spread out are probably good for sporting events, not as much for meetings and conventions for national groups. They want to kind of be closer together. They want to be um, within walking distance more of places. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it all we look at the whole picture and we. Get kind of any groups here that are willing to give us a try. Our last 15 minutes began with a grab bag of stuff. So we're going we're gonna to pivot from that topic on another one. Last Friday, uh, my younger brother got married, and we were taking wedding pictures up at the new North Dakota Heritage Center. That's been just a tremendous addition to our community. Sure, you want to talk a little bit about what's happened there and, and what's brought? <clears throat> you know, that is... 
It is such a beautiful facility, and I, I just feel so fortunate that that is here in, in Bismarck, Mandan, and we we are able to sell that as our attraction. You know, the the renovation has been just fabulous. The, the exhibits are so beautiful. They're, they're state of the art, and it's free to go through there. Which, when we talk to people about that, I was in D.C. a couple of weeks ago, and they're, they're astonished that a state of the art facility like that is free. You know, so there's a couple of things there. It's it's great for visitors. It's also great um, for meetings and events to have like a reception there. I'm not sure if you've been there for mm-hmm. reception yet, but it is a beautiful facility for that. And it, it, it's a nice backdrop. And it also gives them a chance to see the exhibits. And what's really nice about the exhibits is the governor's exhibit. Um, it's a traveling one that oh, will geez. change. Absolutely. So you can... You know, I think it's every six months, I believe. So you can come back here locally all the time and see frequently and see something new in there. It's such what what it strikes me about that facility is that it's something you would expect in a market much larger than ours. I mean, Sherry, you and I have traveled around the country. We've been to places like this, and that's the type of facility you expect in a major metropolitan area. Whereas now you come here, it's right off a of State Street in Bismarck. Exactly. And again, you'll pay at other places. Absolutely. And people pay a lot of money to, to see those type of exhibits of that caliber. What I love about this facility as well is you've got the James River Cafe, so you've got a great dining option in there. It's free, uh, and it's great for all But ages. you have to pay for your food. That's, That's not right. you got to pay for the right. fruit. That's okay. right. It's not fair. So clear that giving, up so not giving away they're not chips. rushing the James River Cafe <laughs> when we're done talking Sorry, here. Edgar. <laughs> so it's, it's great for all ages. I mean, my, my girls are four, are four and two. And we can go there, and you can go in the you can look at the dinosaurs. You've got the they've got the rotating the iPad exhibits. It's fantastic. It is very family friendly. And like you said, a lot of people out there are probably thinking, boy, it doesn't change though. It was the same size as a kid. Well, but not this one. There's not this so one. much. And like you said, that governor's gallery rotates. It's always new. It's always changing. It's a great addition. Another another topic. The Prairie Rose State Games. Now, again, I, I grew up here, born and raised. Uh, I think everyone who has played in Prairie Rose at some point probably has a Prairie Rose T-shirt stuck away somewhere deep in their in their drawer. What's going, what's going on with Prairie Rose? You know, that was one of my all-time favorite events to have here. I actually, in my previous jobs at the CVB, I coordinated the opening ceremonies for that for several years. And, you know, what happened, the... The statewide group that planned that disband, you know, it rotated between the four larger cities mm-hmm. and the Bismarck Parks and Rec coordinated it when they when it was here. And every year it was here, our attendance was great. One year we had over 7,000 people at it. And every facil- every city does something different with it. And our cities did such a great job of marketing and would go to the other cities and they didn't they didn't have the resources at the time. If, I'm not sure if it wasn't mm-hmm. what they did, but the numbers would kind of go down. And then then in four years, when we come back, you know, we'd have to work it all up again. And I think one of the reasons that it probably isn't happening anymore is the traveling teams in the summer. Mm-hmm. There's so much traveling teams that it was hard to get some of those group sports to participate. It also takes an enormous amount of volunteers. You know, I would love to have our city do something like that and have it here every year, but mm-hmm. it really does drain your volunteers. It's a, It needs a huge amount to pull on an event like that. For the last few minutes we've got here, Sherry, and again, if you're listening and you want to make a quick phone call, 663-1270 here in the studio. Sherry, why don't you tell people, I mean, just let's, let's take us out with the CVB, I mean, what you're working on, I mean, maybe the website, tell I me, mean, direct people. Thank you. I mean, tell people, I mean, tell people more about the CVB. Visit the website. I mean, if you've got questions, where do we go? Exactly. And um, just uh, one thing I want to throw in is all these meetings, conventions, and events, whether they're statewide or national, they don't just come here. Um, it's a very competitive business that we compete with uh, local or with the statewide groups. But just to know, we make over 2,500 calls a year to groups to talk to them about having their meeting here. And this last year, over 800 of those were prospecting to new groups. Wow. So just to kind of throw that wow. out there, that these groups don't come here, we have a great team at the CVB that works on them. And I do want to talk about our website a little bit. Um, one thing that is, um, n- n- we have it on our website. I think it's fairly unique. Most places don't have it. We have a place called Hotel Vacancy, where the hotels weekly update their vacancy on our website. Um, our, our website is mobile-friendly. So you can use it on your iPad or your phone. You can go on there. If you're traveling here, you can go on and look and see which hotels have room. Mm. It's based, the codes are if they're vacant, limited vacant, 
capacity or full. So if you need a lot of rooms, you know, well, I'm not going to call this place. It says limited, but it's a great resource. Um, some of the hotels have it on there like three months out. It's nice if you're planning an event. You might Absolutely. know the busier times here, but it's great if you maybe you have too many family coming to your house, Brian. Never weekend, enough, and, and, and you want to know Never where, enough where, which hotel you should put them in. Well, I don't know why you're winking right now. I mean. <laughs> So it's a great resource for that. Um, <laughs> our website is discoverbismarckmandan.com. We also have where to eat on there. Um, we have meeting and event planning. We have travel packages. Um, we have attractions. A calendar of events. Another great resource if you're wondering what's going on here is there is on there. Um, and, you know, Facebook. We try and do a good job of letting people know what's going on, things that we're doing. So if you haven't already liked us, please like us on Facebook. With the, with the last few minutes we've got, I just again I want to thank uh, Cher for being here this morning. Uh, the CVB has been a great partner of the BMDAs, and, and just a, another example of how we're working together. Uh, in two weeks, uh, myself along with uh, Lori and Rita from Sherry's staff will be going up to Regina, Canada, for the Wilson Basin Petroleum Conference. You know, this conference comes to the states every other year. Uh, the reason that the BMDA and the CVB are partnering is because we've got a common goal. When that conference comes back here again next year, we want it to be as big as it can possibly be, and we want to attract new businesses and bring new business with it. And so we've got a common goal here. We're going to go up. The three of us are going to work the booth together. And those partnerships on behalf of Bismarck and Mandan are vital. They're important to what we do because if we don't do these things right, we're going to lose these things. All the events that Sherry said, they don't have to be in Bismarck Mandan. All these venues, all these events have choices. And it's because of organizations like the CVB and others that we have those events here. They spend money in our communities. They add value to what we have here in Bismarck and Mandan. So, Sherry, thank you very much for being with us here today and for all that you do. Well, thank you, and thanks for inviting me to be here. And I am excited about the partnerships that we work on together, awesome. too. Well, on, be, on behalf of Sherry and Jim and myself, I want to thank you for listening to the Dakota Housing Network here on Super Talk 1270. And until we meet again, here comes Motown. <laughs>